Well, everyone, Mac OS Sequoia has just came out still in a beta format, but I wanted to go and give you a breakdown on exactly how to use this version of software. Now, there's lots of cool stuff within it, so I'm not going to waste too much time on this introduction. The big thing I will tell you is that right now it's in a beta, but you can still download it right now or in the future just by going and clicking in the top left corner of your Apple icon right up here. You're going to click on system settings right over here. And if you want to look for an update or if you want to see if it's available, you can go inside of your general settings, which is right here. You then want to go inside of software update. And all you want to do is see if there's an update available for you here. So right now it's checking for updates in the future. If there's another update, you can install it. But also if you want to install the beta updates, which I wouldn't recommend doing, but if you want to, you can just toggle this, you know, this specific thing on if you want to by clicking here and doing the Mac OS, you know, public beta or whichever other beta you want. And, and that's basically how you can do it here. So if you want the big feature, which right now is Apple Intelligence and all those things, you will have to install the Mac OS 15.1 beta. So that is kind of the big one that, you know, everyone's kind of talking about right now, the 15.1 developer beta, but you can kind of configure that depending on whichever, whichever way you want. Apple Intelligence is that really big feature that a lot of people are talking about, and that will be available inside of your settings application. So if you scroll down here, you should be able to see the Apple Intelligence and Siri. So this will no longer say Siri. It'll say Apple Intelligence and Siri. And at that point, you should be able to go through and just kind of use this whichever way you want to. So that's that. Matt, you know, Apple Intelligence is going to be a very, very big feature. Now, some big things to keep in mind, you know, we'll lay of the land. I think everyone knows this. This top bar up here is your status bar. So that's where all your, you know, status bar options will stay. So if you want to get more information within an application or website, you can click up here and kind of access those this way. The top right houses your control center, which is, you know, still there from before, your date and your time, your battery icon if you want this up here. Uh, this middle icon or this middle space is just your desktop. So this is just where all your applications, you know, if you want a folder, you know, you can put folders, photos, videos, files, all sorts of stuff inside of this particular you know, desktop right here. At the very bottom, you have your dock. So this is where all those applications you have inside of your Mac, if you want to keep them here or save them, you can go and keep them here, which is a really cool thing that you have the option of having here as well. So that's kind of the lay of the land. You can always see all your apps by just going like this on your track bar or trackpad, or you can go on your touch bar or your Mac icon up here, like your physical keys, get access to all the keys and the you know applications that you have here. Now, one of the big things that just came inside of our iPhones now is continuity. So now you can actually use your iPhone from your MacBook, which is really, really crazy. So let's say I had an iPhone around here, right? What we can do is we can look for this iPhone mirroring application that shows up right here, or you can also search for iPhone mirroring. And what you can do is you can open up iPhone mirroring. Now you can see my iPhone right now is not supported. This must be because on this particular iPhone, maybe I have an iPhone that is just too old or outdated with software but you can open up this continuity app and see if your iPhone is supported. Again, I think your iPhone needs to be on iOS 18 or 18.1 or above in order to use this, but this is a very cool feature because this is going to allow you to actually use your iPhone basically as an iPhone on your display on your Mac and everything would work necessarily the same, which is crazy. And that is something that's really cool that's going on here as well. So I recommend going through getting used to this specific feature too, because it, you know, it is a really nice feature to have, and it will actually make your iPhone and your Mac feel even more connected than before, which again, is just so crazy to think about. Now on top of that, another big thing to keep in mind here too, is within your Mac, you also have a new passwords application. So what we can do is we can go back into our touch bar right here or to our you know, application gallery, and we have this new passwords application within Mac OS Sequoia. So if we go and click open this passwords app, what this passwords app allows you to do, and I'm not going to open it because I don't want everyone to see my password, but what you can actually do is you can go through and you can basically have access to all of your passwords built in right inside of here, rather than having all your passwords inside of your system settings. So before all the passwords that we had were inside of our system settings panel. So we'd have to go in here, then we have to find our passwords option. It was kind of annoying, but now we actually have that built in inside of passwords now which is genuinely very, very cool as well. So this in and of itself is another very cool thing and a very cool option that we have nowadays too. Now on top of that, within Mac OS Sequoia, we have easy window tilting or window tiling. So what we can do is if we want this application up here, we can go and basically just slap up, you know, application up here and at the very bottom as well. So let's say we want this application here, right? What we can do is we can go ahead. What we can do 
is we can go ahead and click on the green icon right here and we can go and automatically you know kind of fit this application wherever we want to so let's say we want this application like this well we can go and set it up like this and now look all the applications are set up exactly so neatly just like side by side and i can do this with newer applications coming out too so if i click right into here well that's a full screen one but if i go and hop out of full screen you can go ahead and kind of slide applications down and then put them down if they are you know support it sometimes they may not support it but you can see we can go and get this one right here too so you can just kind of monitor and just kind of modify this way whichever way you want to which again is a very very cool thing so now the window tiling is so much nicer it automatically does it for us if we just click on an option and that is something that's very very cool you can still configure these windows out you can still modify them and move them wherever way you want to but it's very cool that we have this type of capability now so that's now a new feature within macOS Sequoia as well. Now we also have another cool thing, which is called Presenter Preview. So what this feature does, and excuse me, I have to bring my iPhone in here for now. What this allows you to do is that whenever you go through and present something to a audience inside of your Mac, what it's going to do now is it's going to go ahead and automatically see exactly what you're going to present like before you're presenting it. So you can make sure that you're not going through and like sharing some random thing or sharing something that's inappropriate or whatever. Like let's say you have you know, save data or something important that you don't want sharing out. Well, Mac OS Sequoia will give you the capability of seeing that right before you actually go through and actually share it. So that is something that is really, really nice as well. And once again, just having that type of capability right there is another very cool thing. You know, Apple really did a good job at kind of giving us the type of capability. Now within Safari, we do have some more features as well within Mac OS Sequoia. So if we go through and take a look at Safari, one of the big things that we have here is highlights. So this is something that's really cool because it gives us the capability of seeing highlights within our particular page, you know, before we're actually going through and actually looking at it. So if we wanted to get the highlights of this page, you know, we already know kind of what this website is. What we can do is we can click on this icon right here, and this is going to give us the highlights of this particular, you know, website that we're looking at. So it's going to intelligently actually give us this type of information, which again is just so cool and so sick to actually have. So what we can do now is we can go and click on here, we can click on turn on, and it's going to summarize this type of page. So it depends on what page you're in and all that, but it's still a really cool thing that we basically have that type of capability of having too, which again is very cool to have, you know, just like that. So personally for me, that's another really cool feature to have as well. Now the reader, you know, kind of got some updates as well. But on top of that, messages, you know, got some really big updates here too. So now we have the capability. I mean, there's just so many features here for the most part. But for one, we actually now have the capability of going through and basically, you know, sending our messages later if we want to, like scheduling our iMessages later. We can go through and tap back with any emoji. You can go through and basically like, you know, have so many other ways to kind of mess. I mean, you can change the text and the tone and everything like that. There's just... There's just an endless amount of stuff that you can basically do with an iMessage now, which is just so cool. And I'm so happy about it because this is just something that's so cool that you basically have the capability of. So that in and of itself, again, is another very cool thing that you have the capability of seeing too. So overall, there's lots and lots of cool things that have came out within, you know, Mac OS Sequoia. I never even hit on the notes, like how many improvements there were with notes and the math notes and all those things. I've talked about those in separate videos. But these are really cool updates, and this is a really, really big size update as well. So those are just a few things of, you know, a few ways that you can go ahead and use your Mac OS Sequoia update and basically how to use it for the most part. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video.